There are many ways to handle collision detection in Flutter. The best practice is to use the collidables mix-ins with your sprite component. There's other videos that I made that covers the collidable with the sprite component. An alternate method is simply to use the position of the girl sprite and position of the platform to see when the girl is on top of the platform. This technique will give you some experience with the sprite component properties, including center, x, and height. Code for this tutorial is available on GitHub. You can use your own assets for this tutorial. We're going to use Flame version 1.0.1. It's currently at release candidate 13. You must install it manually. Don't use Flutter Add. In a brand new Flutter project, go to pubspec.yaml, add the Flame 1.0 dependency to pubspec.yaml, and also open up the assets in the assets. You're going to create an assets folder slash images, and we're going to put the uh, assets for the game in there. It has to be this specific folder. In the main root folder of your project, create a subdirectory assets and then create another folder called images. Then get the graphics that you want to use for your game and then drag and drop it into there. After you drag and drop the graphic files into the uh, folder, make sure you run flutter pub get. We're only going to use the platform and the character in this basic tutorial. Assuming that you created the Flutter project with Flutter Create, uh, there's going to be a pretty extensive sample program there. So we're going to delete almost all of it. And instead of using the My App default uh, state, stateful widget, we're going to create a main game class that extends the base game. So the base game that we're going to create is part of Flame. So you have to import that if your editor doesn't automatically import the base game for you. Once we have the main game class set up, we're going to create a variable for uh, main game uh, and put it above a run app. Because within run app, we're going to have to use game widget. So do var, just by convention call it game, and then instantiate main game. So then within run app, there's this new game widget from Flame, and then pass it to parameter game. At this point, I like to just run the application, even though it's a fully blank black screen. And that's because, uh, you know, you could sometimes mess up the configuration and it's just good, uh, you have a good template to start off with. The main class we'll be working with is Sprite Component. This is a very powerful class from the Flame component system. Let's instantiate the girl as a completely blank sprite component. Once we've instantiated her, we can attach the sprite the position and the size of the character. Uh, this is done in the onload method. The onload method is part of flame, it's part of flame game. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we're going to use async because we're going to need to read in the file of the graphic from the from the storage, so we're going to, we'll use await when we load the sprite in. The two dots is just a cascade operator from Dart, and so it's the same as girl dot sprite equals, but you don't have to write girl every time. So that dot dot position is the same as girl dot position. The position is a little tricky because we're going to have to pass it a vector, but if you just write vector two, those next two uh, double uh, numbers are actually the, just the position of the girl. It's the same thing with size, it's a vector, but the girl will just be 100 by 100 pixels. Once you uh, specify the position, the size, and the sprite, you can just add. Add is a keyword, and that's from Flame, and it's the name of the sprite component, which is girl, and she appears. It's, uh, it's so wonderful, Flame. The sprite components have all these powerful methods that you can access. Let's create another sprite component for platform, and we'll put the platform be below the girl, and then we'll drop the girl onto the platform, so then we can experiment with when does the girl stop when she encounters the platform. We'll use the same process of the cascade operators 
to attach the specific properties for the sprite, the position, and the size of the platform. And then we'll just add the platform into the game. So add is a keyword of the Flame game system. And all these wonderful properties are part of the uh, sprite component, which is extends the position component. So if you actually just look at the documentation or the source code, you can see all these wonderful properties and methods that comes with the sprite component. But we're just dealing with these three properties right now. The, the sprite, uh, the position, and the size. And with that, we can load the sprite component platform on into the game. The first coordinate of the position is the X coordinate, second is the Y coordinate. So if the X coordinate is the same at 100, we'll have the girl lined up directly above the platform. And the upper left hand corner of the screen is 0, 0. So the bigger the Y coordinate, the further down the, the sprite is. So right now the girl is not moving, but it's relatively easy to get her to move. We're gonna use the update method that's part of the base game. Uh, this update method is also part of the sprite component, but we'll just use it here in the, in the base game so that you can see it. So you override the built-in update method, uh, it's void, and then we're going to run super update dt, it's just the, uh, the, the delta time that comes in, and we're going to move the girl down. So by adjusting, uh, it's supposed to be y, not x, by adjusting the Y component and making it bigger, we're gonna make the girl move downward. And she's finally moving down. If we restart it, she should eventually hit the platform. But since we're not, we don't have any checks right now to see, to tell us what happens when the girl hits the platform, she's just gonna pass right through the platform. So again, you should probably use collidables when you're actually writing your game, but because this is a simple tutorial, uh, and we're going to explore more about the sprite component. We're just going to use the built-in, uh, the, the Y coordinate position, or the height of the sprite component, so that you can start to get more familiar with what properties you have access to in the sprite component. So the girl.y position is the top portion of the girl, and the bottom where her feet are, that um, you have to add the height in there. So that's why I'm adding the girl.y plus girl.height. So the first step is just to do a simple check to see if the bottom of the girl, her feet, passes the top of the platform. So the top of the platform is just platform.y. So at this stage, the we can detect when the girl passes the platform, but we're not doing anything with that. So let's move the, the movement of the girl so that if she only moves down, if she hasn't past the point of the platform. So let's see what happens now, because theoretically, if the, if the girl, uh, if the feet is below the top of the platform, she'll stop moving. There's a little gap there. So I'm gonna try to push her feet a little bit further down so that it looks like she's right on the grass. If you recall, the girl is a transparent image and so there's a little transparent border be between her and the feet. Uh, I, sh I should have actually uh, subtracted it. So let's try it again and see whether we can get her feet to give that illusion that she's, you know, she's right on the grass. If you're using collidables as a way to actually shrink down the, the hitbox but for this simple uh, tutorial we're just going to manually uh, take into account the, the border around her feet. So you could use this technique as is if the girl is climbing up stairs or a pyramid or some type of mountain terrain where if, if they never go below the, the actual height of the platform, this would be okay. So if this were the ground, this would be the only check you would need, but because it's a platform, you, you want her to drop down if she's to the right of the platform, right? So. That's the whole purpose of this type of platformer game. So we're going to have to put another check in to make sure that she only hits the platform and stops if she's both, if her, her feet are above the top of the platform and if her left edge is also over the, over the, the edge of the platform. So we're going to add another check in to see 
to um, only to move her down if her um, the left edge of her is not uh, over the right edge of the platform itself. So we're going to use a boolean and statement. The ampersand ampersand is just and, and we're going to use parentheses to make it clearer uh, that both of these boolean statements have to be true. The X property, row.x, is built into the sprite component and it's the girl's left edge. To get the right edge of the platform, we'll use the left edge of the platform, which is X, and add it to the width of the platform. Width is another one of these beautiful properties in sprite component. So now the girl is dropping down. Um, you know, it's any portion of the girl is over the platform, she'll stop. So it's kind of forgiving to the player. Uh, you could make it less forgiving and, you know, cut cut it in so that maybe her feet have to be over the platform. It's kind of up to you and how you want to make the playability and how forgiving. Generally, the people are generally happier if, you know, they're, it's pretty forgiving and it's almost like the girl has Velcro. If any portion of the girl hits the platform, she's, you're, you're, she's safe and she's going to stop. The remaining issue is that the girl cannot go under the platform. So we're going to have to add another check to see that you know if she's under the platform, then she can also still move. In the first example, there was a power-up uh, pill. So the girl, and the power-up pill is under the platform, so the girl would have to go under the platform to refill her jetpack. So without the third check, if you place the girl under the platform, she's not going to move. And that's because the Boolean values here have been met. But we're going to use another AND. So with the this, with this second AND, all three conditions will have to be met in order uh, for the girl to stop moving. So again, well, I'm going to be forgiving. Uh, I'm assuming the girl's like Spider-Man and she's going to be able to cling to anything. If, if any part of her, of, of her body, her feet, or any, anything is touching the platform, so I'm just going to look for the girl's feet, and if it, if the girl's feet is anywhere on the platform, if it's above the, the top of the platform, then she'll stop. Otherwise, she's just going to drop down. And with this final check, you have a fairly usable game platform that you can build into a rudimentary jumper game to share with your friends. I have another video which covers the uh, animated sprites components with collision detection using the the built-in sprite collidables. Although this method is, I think it's pretty simple to understand. Um, and you can also play around with the the border of the hit detection yourself. Most importantly, it will give you a better understanding of all the wonderful properties that's already built into the flame sprite component. There's 24 videos now in my Flame tutorial series. It's a hobby of mine. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I think I'm going to keep updating it for a while. Um, if you want to see anything, you can drop me a comment and I'll take into consideration for the future. Thanks a lot and have a great day.